Now let's talk about inverse functions. The inverse of a function is really just switching the inputs and the outputs. So instead of the number of apples giving you the total cost of your bundle, it's going to be the opposite. It's now you're inputting the total cost, and it's going to output how many apples it was. So really that's what it is. It's switching what the x variable is and what the y variable is. So looking at if you have a table, for example, like this, and if I were to ask you what's f of 4, you would just say, all right, well, when x is 4, y is 20, so f of 4 is 20. And here's a notation for inverse function. If I were to then ask you what's f inverse, it's sort of like a negative 1 exponent on the f. So what's the f inverse of 20? Well, it's not the reciprocal. So again, don't confuse this negative 1 uh, notation with an actual exponent of negative one, it's you're not taking the reciprocal. It really just means you invert what's the x and what's the y. So f inverse of 20, it's asking a different question. It's now asking when your output, when your y variable is 20, what's your x, what's your input variable? So here, when your output is 20, your input was four. So f inverse of 20 is four. So that, that's really all that's going on here. If I were to ask you what's f inverse of four, it's not that, oh, f of 4 was 20, so f inverse of 4 is like the reciprocal or whatever. No. Again, the question here is when y is 4, what's x? And on this table, we don't have that info. There is no y value of 4, so we just don't, don't, don't have enough info for that. So that's just what this notation is. Now, how do you actually apply that in practice? Let's say you're given an example of this. f of x equals 4x plus 2, just your standard line. And you're asked to find the inverse, f inverse of x. All right, so how are we going to do that? How are we going to find f inverse of x if this is our function? Well, uh, first of all, let's just write this in perhaps more familiar notation of y. The output is really equal to 4x plus 2. And if we were to switch which is which, then that's like the output is equal to 4y plus 2, right? And so now we just got to solve for y, solve for our new output, right? So what would we do? Regular equation solving thing. Subtract 2 from both sides. x minus 2 is 4y. And divide both sides by 4. So you get uh, x minus 2 all over 4 equals y. Which, of course, if you want, you can simplify as x over 4. So 1 fourth x minus 2 over 4, which is a half, equals y. But our y, the notation now, this is like our original input, right? That was our original x. So that's the notation is this, f inverse of x. That's the notation. And so this is your inverse function. Notice one thing is the inverse function of a line is always another line. But let's have one more example here. Let's say your function is this g of p is equal to negative 5p plus 7, minus 7. All right. Well, again, even though there's not x's and y's here, it's really the same exact process. So you can just switch. Uh, and again, here, even if your y variable isn't defined, you can call it whatever. Uh, but really, you just want to solve for that, right? So if you were to call that y or q or whatever your y variable is, uh, we could just say we could switch this guy and the input and say, all right, so our p is equal to negative 5y minus 7. And again, the same process. We just solve for the, the original input. Add 7 to both sides and then divide both sides by negative five. So we get p plus seven all over negative five. And of course, that's possible to simplify that and that's still just a line, but that equals your original input of uh, p. And so that's gonna be, uh, the notation is g inverse of p. So again, you switch, so long story short, you switch the input and the output, you solve for the, original, what was the originally the input, but now it's sort of written as your output. And once you get that, notationally, that's just called the inverse function.